Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Detroit, Michigan, it's time for Detroit Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Detroit Business Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today, we have with us Bob Mattler with Green Portfolio Solutions. Welcome, Bob. Thanks for having me, Lee. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to at Green Portfolio Solutions. How are you serving folks? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, We're uh, really trying to help building owners and developers work with a next-gen financing solution for building properties more efficient and for upgrading properties to use less energy and less water and also install renewables. So making buildings smarter, healthier, more comfortable for the folks that uh, are using those buildings. So now how does the financing element come into play on this? Um, Yeah, what we're using is actually a state law here in Michigan and um, PACE, which stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy, is a statute here in Michigan and 36 other states. So it started in California and it's working its way throughout the country. Um, People are using PACE as a financing alternative from a commercial bank loan or private equity because at the end of the day, it's usually less expensive easier to obtain, and has a lot of other benefits from uh, traditional financing. Now, is this um, targeted specifically at commercial real estate? Um, PACE is actually in four states that, uh, for residential property owners. It's in California, Missouri, Ohio, and Florida right now. Michigan's looking at bringing in PACE for residential properties, but all those other states about 31, 32 states, I believe, in the District of Columbia are just using PACE right now for commercial properties and nonprofit properties. Now, is it used for like building a building from scratch or can you take and renovate an existing building? Like what's eligible for the financing? Yeah, PACE is covered by uh, state law. Most states do allow for PACE to be used in the capital stack when you're building a new building. So instead of going out and getting traditional mezzanine financing or private equity at 12, 14% interest, people are seeing PACE as a much lower cost, uh, bringing in PACE anywhere between 5 and 6% instead of that more expensive uh, capital. And PACE is what's called gap financing capital. When you still have a gap in your capital stack on your building that you're trying to build, you can bring in PACE to cover that gap. And again, it's cheaper than mez financing or private equity. On the other side, if you're a building owner and you just want to uh, improve your roof, uh, need to uh, have a roof replacement or insulation, need to replace your windows, elevator upgrade, anything that is dealing with energy or water inside or outside of that building, you can use PACE to retrofit that building. And it's got many benefits over traditional financing. So now, uh, so that means like if you're the landlord of a building and you just need, you know, kind of a, to refresh it and maybe upgrade some of the stuff, you can really be eligible for PACE. Is that something your firm helps people kind of educate themselves and get that kind of financing? Yeah, PACE is uh, pretty much a new alternative financing uh, mechanism in most of the states. And, um, you know, there's a uh, a lot of paperwork and there's some time, some expertise involved. We hold ourselves out as uh, owner's representatives and getting them through the process to the finish line and getting that um, closing so they can get those uh, funds in order to upgrade their building. Or if you're, again, building a new building, uh, get that gap financing capital to uh, finish your building uh, capital stack and, and uh, put shovels in the ground. Um, Pace is um, a unique Uh, in many respects from traditional financing, uh, and uh, it does require some expertise. So we hold ourselves out as PACE experts to help building owners and developers get to the finish line with this financing. So now do you help them just even have the conversation of, am I eligible for this? Is this something that I can take advantage of? Because um, if it's new, a lot of people probably don't know the ins and outs of it as well as you do. Yeah, that's correct. Um, we uh, have uh, initial no-cost conversations with uh, building owners, understand what their needs are, what they're trying to accomplish, 
And uh, depending on what state they're in, whether they're eligible for uh, PACE financing, uh, after uh, we believe that there's a possible uh, path to PACE financing, we help them with the application. If they need help with contractors, we can help them with that. And I believe one of our best services is uh, making sure that we get the best financing package available for them on both terms and interest rate. So uh, we usually contact two, three PACE financing providers. Uh, most of these states have private financing, and there are special PACE financing uh, equity groups that provide the financing. And we're able to get two or three um, quotes and proposals, uh, term sheets, actually, on um, on building owners' uh, interest in uh, moving forward. So it becomes a competitive process, and we help make sure that the uh, owners are well-served in uh, getting the uh, best terms and uh, best financing rates. So now how did you kind of um, decide to go kind of deep on on PACE? Uh, great question. I have a real estate and commercial brokerage background. Uh, I've been an attorney for almost 35 years and uh, was heavily involved in real estate. And I was invited to a meeting about 10 years ago through the uh, commercial uh, brokerage uh, realtors uh, group here in Michigan. And two thirds of that conversation uh, was talking about smart buildings and sustainability. And that was back in uh, 1998. So I've kind of seen the green light uh, ever since then, realizing that uh, we have uh, issues with our climate. But more importantly, there's a smarter, faster, less expensive way to build and improve your building. Uh, and it really just impacts the bottom line. So I start out with a proposition that uh, we can do a project with PACE. It'll cost you a dollar, but over the uh, 20 or 25 year term, we're going to save you a buck 25, buck 30 for every dollar you put in on these projects. And um, if you're using PACE, it's usually non recourse, so no guarantees by the owner. Um, again, long term financing, so these projects become net cash flow positive annually. You're putting more money in your pocket than you're paying on the PACE uh, project. And um, basically, you've got a great green story to tell. And in many aspects, there's an opportunity for you to pass on these construction costs to the uh, tenants if you have a triple net lease. Uh, this is a property tax, and uh, you can pass that along most often on a triple net lease to your uh, to your tenants. So win, win, win all the way down the road, Lee. So now in the uh, in the Detroit market, is this an area for you that you see a lot of opportunity that just the landlords aren't just that um, familiar with this and they, they haven't been taking advantage of it? Or is this something that a lot of people are aware of and they're just kind of doing this as a matter of, of just good business now? Yeah, because PACE is fairly new, it's still mostly unknown and it's becoming more mainstream, but it's not quite there yet. So I'm talking to building owners and developers that have been in the business 30, 40 years, and their eyes are kind of opening wide at the uh, possibilities of putting pace in their capital stack. Similarly, um, if uh, you're an uh, industrial uh, user and you want to have a cleaner, healthier, more comfortable building for your employees, uh, they're looking at uh, retrofitting uh, their buildings now versus uh, you know trying to save money each year on reserves and capital X and waiting five, 10 years to improve that building. If you have a no cost, no guarantee, no use of your credit, no covenants to sign option right now, long term financing, five, six percent, where the project where the projects are usually paying off more than the cost. Why wouldn't you do the project now? Um, there's very little downside. So now has this covid crisis uh, impacted what you're up to at all? Yeah, that's a crazy, uh, crazy thing that's happened. Um COVID has done nothing but actually enhance uh, people's eyes towards pace. Because if you think about what happened with the COVID crisis, banks uh, in these types of uh, turmoil situations, uh, tumultuous situations, always become a little bit more conservative. So if you've got a project right now that you're trying to uh, get uh, your capital for, whereas before COVID, banks might be giving you 75% loan to value of your project, they've kind of hedged their bets a little bit and they'll come back now to 60% or 62% uh, loan to value on your building. So now your gap just got wider and more developers are uh, very much interested in uh, using PACE to cover that uh, larger gap. And uh, if you're a building owner um, and, uh, you know, you're an office building owner and you want to make sure that uh, – you know, COVID-19 is not going to scare away all your tenants and they won't uh, sign another lease. 
uh, you need to think about improving your air quality or making that building a little bit better than your competitors. And uh, uh, building owners are looking at using PACE right now to do just that. And uh, the banks are less friendly on uh, lending on a boiler or a, a roof or windows. And uh, that's uh, PACE's uh, sweet spot. So <laughs> business has increased probably double since uh, COVID-19, surprisingly. Right, because it's, it fits hand in glove with the crisis, <laughs> right? Exactly. It's a solution to most building owners' pain right now. And um, they're discovering PACE and they're saying, no, this, this can't be true. Uh, this sounds too good to be true. And um, again, it's a public-private financing program, and the government's in it because they want buildings to be spewing out less carbon um, dioxide, and uh, the building owners love it because it's uh, fairly, you know, fairly cheap capital. And it's also a benefit to all the people in the building. So it, it, it's like you said, it is a win-win-win all the way around. Yeah, and I like to talk about the intrinsic value of upgrading your building. So if you have less people sick during the year, um, you can't even put a dollar cost on that uh, for productivity. So PACE enhances productivity. And um, if you're talking about intrinsic benefits, attracting and retaining more millennials for your apartment building, um, having a great green story to tell, um, being the first one in your um, uh, area to have a lean building, a uh, lean, smart, green building. Um, there's there's very much good PR that's uh, behind these types of buildings right now. And at the end of the day, if you're saving money on these retrofits, why not do it? Now, um, what is kind of the amount you can use for financing? Is there a minimum and a maximum? Well, the good news is there is no maximum. Um, the largest PACE project thus far has been the Salt Lake Hyatt building attached to their convention center in Salt Lake, uh, Utah. And uh, that uh, was a $55 million uh, capital stack that PACE brought in on over $376 million uh, new investment. So PACE is uh, uh, for the largest uh, types of uh, construction, uh, in that case, $55 million. And on the lower end, here in Michigan, we have a, uh, a sub-program called PACE Express, where a building owner can start out with a PACE project little over $100,000 uh, to use a, a much um, quicker, cheaper program called Pace Express. Most finance companies out there are starting out Pace projects around $250,000. And then it, again, it just goes up from there. Now, is it something that you can get financing maybe for just one upgrade and then just keep kind of like you've been using the word stacking, just keep adding and getting more and more. Like once you've kind of been uh, blessed into this program and, and you're working it, then you can say, oh, I can use it for this or I can use it for that. And then you can expand it. Or is it you get one kind of bite out of the apple if you go for PACE? Uh, PACE in most states just allows one project per year. So if you just wanted to do one project, um, upgrade your lighting, for instance, or re replace that roof, you can do that with a PACE project for that specific calendar year. Uh, when we start talking to uh, owners and they see the value of PACE, they say, well, if I don't have to put any money into the project right now, um, and I know I'm going to need a roof in five years. Why not just do the LED and the roof project and upgrade my HVAC all at once? And uh, that way you only have one closing. So that's less costly than doing it three years in a row with, you know, three closing and all those costs that go along with uh, closing a, a real estate project. So um, most times we see um, owners that are doing multiple projects um, in a year. And then um, I, I might mention, too, that it's... Um, Another feature of PACE that you'll never see with a commercial loan is most financing companies using PACE financing will allow you up to defer your first payment up to two years after you close. So you could be a building owner, improve your building, and then not have to make that first PACE payment until two years after you close, allowing you to bank all that energy and water savings and get the uh, the attention uh, you desire for stabilizing your property before even starting to pay off this loan. But I think that this is where having an expert in your corner like your firm can really help uh, somebody think strategically and not just say, oh, I heard of this thing, let me get it, and then not really understanding kind of the nuance to it where you can really maximize your savings and really um, leverage this for a bigger gain if you knew what you were doing. 
Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, you know, doing surgery on your foot. Is it possible to do? Yes. Do you really want to do it? No. And he here's why. Again, case is fairly new. If you've got a mortgage, we need to get lender consent from your bank because we're putting a tax lien on your property. This is a special property tax assessment. It's not a mortgage. So we need to have the delicate conversations with your bank that it's going to be a benefit to the bank by them having this lien on the property. And why would it be a benefit to a bank having a lien ahead of their mortgage? Well, some of the reasons are we're going to be able to increase the debt service coverage ratio for that borrower, and that's going to make it uh, easier for them to get additional cash flow and pay off that mortgage that they have with the bank. And again, if we're increasing the uh, net operating income of a building, that's directly increasing the value of a building. And the value of a building is very important to a bank because that's their collateral. So once a bank actually opens up their ears and start listening to the reasons why they would uh, allow PACE financing, most lenders have no problem providing lender consent. And again, um, you don't want to have that conversation with your banker uh, without a little bit of understanding uh, the benefits of uh, using uh, PACE on a project. Um, the other thing I might add, too, it's good to have an expert because there's four or five different stakeholders on every PACE project. If you have a loan that you've got your bank, they're a stakeholder. Obviously, the owner is a stakeholder. Your general contractor or your sub is going to be a stakeholder. They have to understand the program. There's always a PACE administrator running the program. You have to deal with them. And then, um, again, you want to have somebody that's going to get you the best terms and the best financing. So we go out there and get a competitive bid, bidding process going to help the owner. That, that There's a lot of uh, time and effort involved in the PACE project right now. And I wouldn't suggest anybody try and do it first time on their own. And then when they're working with you, is this something that you help them have those conversations with all those stakeholders? Or do you give them the information for them to have? Or do you actually kind of are there with them to help them have those conversations when it gets into the weeds a little bit? Yeah, we are the, uh, we are the uh, owner's representative. We're involved in every conversation with every stakeholder and making sure the project is moving forward and we're getting to the finish line in the most expeditious manner possible. Now you mentioned um, like this is kind of a new and unique um, program. How does it play with like opportunity zones and um, some of the areas that are also kind of new and maybe people aren't are, are are doing work in but aren't you know sure of how everything kind of fits together? Yeah, that's a great question, Lee. Uh, Pace is unique, uh, and one of the many benefits is Pace is just should be looked at as just another economic development tool in the building owner's uh, pocket or in the developer's pocket. So if you're a developer and you're in an opportunity zone, you can use that. You can use tax abatements. You can use historic tax credits. You can use new market tax credits. You can use a brownfield credits. You can use TIF. You can use uh, pretty much any of the economic development tools available to a developer in that state on top of PACE. Uh, I might also add, too, um, PACE also works with rebate programs from the um, – uh, utilities. So if you're a utility, uh, we make sure that the uh, owner is aware of rebate programs if they're upgrading their HVAC or their lighting. Uh, there's a lot of uh, free money out there. Utilities trying to help building owners become um, a little bit more efficient. So we, we're just not talking about pace. We're really trying to help the uh, building owner understand that this is just one tool. We're aware of others. And again, we try and be their eyes and ears on uh, saving them money all across the board on their projects or their upgrades. Right. It sounds like it's it's not an or, it's an and. Definitely a capital A and. <laughs> now, uh, for you, what is the ideal um, kind of prospect? Who is the person that you think would most benefit from your counsel? Okay, well, again, there's two different buckets. The first bucket are developers. Uh, we just helped a uh, Ann Arbor multifamily ground-up construction project with almost $2 million of capital. And that capital was used for some very cool things that they wanted to have on their project, such as um, electronic vehicle stations uh, for uh, charging uh, stations for electronic vehicles. Uh, they put on solar. Uh, part of the units have geothermal and uh, super insulated uh, building, um, LED lighting, obviously, uh, just a lot of cool, um, green, sustainable, resilient features in this building 
that, you know, we're more money, but at the end of the day, um, the $2 million project we're estimating is going to save close to $3.5 million over the 25-year term that they're going to be paying back on the PACE financing. So that's the developer bucket. On the new building, or excuse me, on the uh, the building that's already built bucket, uh, we're talking to a uh, industrial user uh, who wants to um, upgrade their building because uh, they want to get more tenants in there. And we're looking at everything from a new roof, windows, a uh, new elevator, and uh, also uh, helping with, um, you know, uh, providing additional insulation to that building. The building has a very high uh, electric cost every month, even during the uh, summertime. And we're going to be able to bring that down close to 40%. So the savings are going to justify the additional expenditures on all these projects at once. And the owner uh, is looking at taking that two-year deferred payment because he wants to get a tenant in there after he does the upgrades and not have to worry about paying on pace before he's got it leased out. Now, um, we've been talking a lot about this um high efficiency and renewable energy element to this. And this isn't just this fluffy, sounds good, good PR thing. This is really green dollar savings over time. This isn't something you're doing, oh, it, oh, the, this is just, you know, so we can market this. There's real value that comes from making these changes. And anything that helps you and encourages you to do it is something you should really think hard about. Yeah, that's true. Uh, when we started this business almost seven years ago, we were a little naive. We were talking about uh, the green benefits to Earth and um, how it's going to help the environment. And while all that is true, if you're a building owner, you're really worried about the dollars and cents. And I like to start off with saying the pace not only saves you dollars, but it makes sense, S-E-N-S-E, -E, uh, because, again, with all the features and unique benefits over traditional financing, um, instead of waiting to uh, do that roof replacement or waiting to do that uh, upgrade to your elevator, you can do it now, start the savings immediately, and then um, you know make the payments uh, down the road if you so choose. So again, it's a financial decision first for most people, and um, PACE would not be taking off in 37 states uh, if it didn't make sense and save dollars for the developers and the owners who are using it. Well, Bob, if somebody wanted to learn more, have a more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, what is the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, the best way is uh, the phone number is 248. That's the area code 248-762-4370. And the uh, email is green, like the color, G-R-E-E-N, P as in Paul, S as in Sam, the number 14 at Gmail. So greenps14 at gmail.com. Well, good stuff. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You're doing important work and we appreciate you. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, Lee, and have yourself a great day. Thank you. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Detroit Business Radio. 